It's new. Welcome back to It's New. And today uh, we have with us Greg and Crystal. Morty is doing some family things, so it's good luck with that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but it's new. <laughs> and we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, Greg, I guess, Greg, if you want to tell us, give us a little preview? Yeah, we have some new things from GML, but maybe not as much new as some people hoped. Good one. Crystal? Um, I want to talk about, it's kind of in the same vein, actually. Um, uh, is AI taking our jobs? Uh, SEOjobs.com wants to wants to know. Yeah, and I'm going to little touch on a little bit the unusual surge I saw in Google Search Console reporting and maybe some breaking volatility. <laughs> All right, yesterday, Google had their Google Marketing Live, their flagship marketing event where they typically release all their ad news. This one was a strange one, I thought. For about the first 30 minutes when watching it, I feel like Google was just selling us on them being experts at AI. That was like, for a long time, they just kept talking about how they were the experts on AI. And there weren't as many, I guess, products or updates, a lot of things that already been announced and they kind of just were like rehash them. Um, there were a few quotes and just jump in if you want on there. They kind of ran through the fact that 15% of searches are new on Google every day. Uh, there are 12 billion searches a month using Lens and mm -hmm. one in four of those has uh, commercial intent. Um, and then searches with five or more words grew 1.5 times as fast as uh, other searches have. So that was, I'd say, relatively interesting. I thought the Google Lens stat, stat was interesting because I think in 2022, when they when they were sort of going big, big on, on Google Lens, it was 8 billion. So they're seeing some growth, but maybe not as quickly as they were expecting. I don't get why they're thinking, even when I talk to them, they always mention Google Lens and how popular that is. I, I don't get why they keep saying that. Okay, big deal. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> they're really into it and they keep people adding more really, things. To uh, it. I don't think people are like, it's not, you can't compare the volume to search. So I don't, whatever. Sorry. I just, well, one of the big deals, Barry, is they're going to be able to monetize it because that was an announcement at GML. So they showed a right. picture of somebody stalking somebody's um, luggage in an airport and saying, I really like this red luggage. And then what will happen is uh, people will get ads to similar red luggage when they use Lens. Yeah, but it's going to be a still a small. It's I get it. It's cool. It's amazing technology, and they want people to use it more, which is why they're probably counting it, and they want to obviously monetize it. Um, I just, it just I don't see people doing that often. And I'm like, they should be. I just don't see them doing it, and it's great. I hope they. I hope people search like that because people taking pictures of me as I'm walking down and walking through the airport. I think is great. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you see Barry, take his picture and snap a photo of his luggage. Right. Um, a couple other nuggets about AI overviews that came out is people who use AI overviews search more. There's mm. higher quality clicks coming from AI overviews that are spending more time on site. So again, that was rehashed. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I mean, if they're searching more, does that, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, if that's a flex, you know what I mean? Like, like did the AI overview, do you know what I mean? Did the AI <laughs> overview satisfy the search? If they have to do another search, like it is, is that? Did it work? You know what I mean? Um, an instant answer if I say like, how far is it from the earth to the moon? And they say it's, you know, XD kilometers or XD miles or something like that. That's cool. I don't have to do another search then. I'm satisfied, I'm done. Um, so I don't know. I think it, I think that's that's interesting as a, as a as a stat. Right, I mean, the stat was really for Wall Street. They want people to search more. People are, there's rumors like people are searching less. AI overviews generate more searches because people have a conversation with them and every single conversation you have generates another search. And the longer queries are important because that's what AI overviews are all about, generating longer queries where Google would better understand what you're searching for and better have a better conversation with you because you're talking to them like a person. And I think also it's a lot of it because you were saying that that you know it's not that new. I think a lot of it is just to make sure that like the that the usurpers are kept at bay. So like in terms of the circle to search and the, those sorts of things from from visual search, you know, Amazon has been all over that for a while. Pinterest are really good at that sort of like isolate this one little bit and and search on this search this particular thing. Um, and then also like I think the long tail, the long long tail. Um, uh, searches, Bing's been doing that on their their search their, their searches with new Bing or Copilot or whatever um, for for a while as well. So I think part of it's just to make sure that like just so you know, we've got this covered as well. 
Yeah, there was also a lot of talk about AI not being a marketer, and they rolled out <clears throat> a better look at how ads will play into AI overviews now. Um, mm. I would say it's a better experience. It, there, it, it ties it together a little bit better. If you saw at IO, there was like how to get stains out of clothes, and some of the responses were like, use baking soda, use lemon, this, and then just products. And so instead it said, if you're looking for something on the fly and kind of tied those shopping ads in a little bit better, the thing I was surprised about is they still didn't really show examples of like a text ad or an RSA, right? They had like one big shopping ad. I think that that pool one that they showed there, that might've been a text ad with an image asset on it, but mm -hmm. it wasn't still like fully fleshed out is not everybody has products and not everybody runs shopping ads. No, so I, I felt like those ads are a lot, you have to scroll to get to those ads. Mm -hmm. it's, it's technically Google because so we have ads at the top, at the bottom, and now we're going to put ads in the in the AI overviews. But really, it's at the bottom of the AI overview. So it really wasn't like in, baked into the actual AI overview as much as I thought it would be. I think also the um, there there's a certain extent of you know they talked they also need, dropped so they dropped that that fifteen percent statistic they dropped that a lot. They also dropped um, the statistic about brand searches. Um, and about and about you know that that sort of thing. So I think that it could w very well be that you know that if people are understanding brand searches, that like maybe the text thing might be a might might evolve into like the way that your links are integrated into your branded AI uh, overview. So maybe like if you were Nike or something, when people search for for your brand, like maybe you could actually have some a way to curate your AI overview. I I don't think that that would be too difficult to do in terms of a text ad. I think that it might evolve into being part of the tech stack. Okay, and and then a few other kind of big pieces of news. My favorite presenter was uh, Sylvanus Bent, and yes. he introduced um, the power pair. Which say it again, is power the pair. Power pair. And he's like, <laughs> just say it, it's so fun to say it. And I started saying it, I'm like, this is so fun. The like power it. pair <laughs> is just Pmax and search. With the, and it's like it seemed like it's like like broad match with smart bidding search yeah. campaign and then uh, Pmax. So I just like that, and I said it, and it did flow, and it does sound nice. And I'm uh, uh, the number one fan of the power pair. Power pair, and this is not to be confused with a conference pair or any other type of pair. Um, but yeah, the, the power pair. I thought I thought that was interesting. Also, like a lot of they were ta talking a lot about broad broad match, which sounds expensive to me. Like I don't know what how you felt about that as a paid paid person. I, I use Broadmatch and Pmatch for everything. Um, you, you just have to use it the right way. So okay. I agree. I agree totally with it. To be honest with you, and I've come around on that. Um, another thing they talked about was profit optimization as a bidding strategy that was already announced before. So I, that wasn't really new, but they kind of touted it as new. Um, to me, one of the the biggest things that I really liked was if you've got just a product on like a white background, some of the new creative um, options can change that background, expand that background to bigger sizes. I've got uh, companies with, you know, 200,000 products in feed and, and we do some things manually and this, this could be a huge time saver. Um, I know a lot of people are complaining about GML. I liked it. They didn't like blow Google ads up and break it into pieces there were a lot of helpful things in there and that to me was like the number one was some of those um image uh creation tools that they announced yeah i was wondering like there was a lot of positive stuff on twitter about google marketing live but also a lot of negativity and i'm just not understanding why there's such a big rift i mean google announced a bunch of stuff some of it wasn't new and that's what happens we see these things also being tested before they even announce it um, and Google sometimes drops hits and hits to them as well because they can't just they can't just save everything for Google Marketing Live. This is kind of their recap of what we're launching and what's coming soon, even though we talked about it. So I'm not understanding why there's so with so much negativity around Google Marketing Live. I, I loved it. I mean, I just want to have Google Ads exist, and you know, I think that's a win if with GML they don't they don't totally tear it to the ground. And again, I think there were some some good things in there. Um, a couple other items that they announced as well is what I thought it was the funniest part is one of the speakers was talking about didn't have a pause break but it's like we're bringing Pmax more uh, reporting to Pmax and and then he had to stop because everybody was cheering in the audience which is hysterical. <laughs> um, and it's asset level reporting we'll see how good it is and then you can also remove some some YouTube placements on that um, some changes came to demand gen uh, 
people said they like the lookalike audiences. You can now make a lookalike off a hundred people instead of a thousand people. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then on the product studio, we touched a little bit on that. One of the biggest things that I thought was incredible was the brand profile on search. How do people not like that? How are people get going away from GML saying this is bad? Yeah, advertisers. It's a free thing. It's it's massive. I I can't imagine how that's a bad thing for advertisers. I don't like it as an organic SEO guy. Like get that out of here. But for advertisers, yeah. And I'm guessing they'll probably bake ads into it somehow or do mm -hmm. something. But the mm -hmm. ability to really kind of like have a control of your brand and I have to pay so much money all the time is huge. And again, you can like have uh, so so much bigger real estate for your stuff instead of paying for it. Mm. Um, there was a whole bunch of 3D stuff, like 3D tr uh, virtual try-ons. Um, the one thing I didn't love was the immersive experiences. They had an example of a storage company. And instead of going to the website, you kind of got like a, a weekly branded Google uh, portal or, where you could put in like pictures of your room and stuff. That seems weird because you, they have to do all the stuff on the Google side before they make it to the site. And then like, when are you clicking? And, and, and it didn't look great to me. And like, that's what you have landing pages for and stuff. Um, <laughs> So, so I don't know. And then there was really not too much either at, at the end on the data side. We're talking about collect, protect, and use your data. And like this is from the makers of GA4. So like, mm. again, it just seemed like they were trying to like instill confidence throughout the entire GML. And then they talked about Meridian and how it's going to be rolling out um, their MMM for everybody this year. So that was sort of it in a nutshell. Um, again, I'll take this. If you, you could have told me this, I, I'm taking it. I, 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 yeah. I'm here for it. I think I think they were really into AI. I think that might be why a little bit why people were, but they were they're really into AI, but in a more practical sense. And I think that also like the AI the AI upset in has already kind of happened in ads in a, in a way that it didn't happen in search uh, before. So I think that like the like ads advertisers have been dealing dealing with with the sharp end of AI or whatever for a while now. Um, so I think that maybe some of the people who are saying oh I don't don't like it so much or maybe people who are still like maybe not fully bought in, but like I think it's very clear that that, that that's what's going on. But I think they were also more explicit than they were at IO compared to, um, about like how it how it will be rolled out which I think I think you know I found it similarly I found it more reassuring I found it more like here's some stuff to do here's some stuff that you will be able to use and I found that like more more useful than IO yeah and I'm sure Greg and the, the team at uh, Market O'Clock will go ahead and go dive through this in real detail so check out their uh, channel on Friday morning and you'll get all the deep news on this Google Marketing Live on that note, uh, Crystal, you want to talk about jobs or lack thereof? Yeah, so I thought this I thought this was interesting, and I think I think it's interesting, like with folks who are responding to AI stuff. So um, Nick Leroy over at SEOjobs.com is reporting on the state of SEO job market in Q1 2024, and he talks about you know where where jobs are moving, and he's he's looking at you know jobs compared to Q1 2024 and Q1 2023, um, and it looks like like they're down or then it says. Um, Data suggests that SEO jobs are down on average around 37% Q1. And one of the interesting things that he pointed out was that they seem to be in some of the, and, and they don't seem to be at the top level. So the top level, so people who are more experienced, senior senior level talent is up 3%. Um, and an intern entry level is up 1%, but mid-level is down 6%. And this this I find really interesting because, um, you know, he said he talks about AI um, rocking that space and how, you know, entry level SEO might struggle a little bit to, to be able to deliver value at the moment when when there's AI that's able to cover a lot of the sort of base econo sort of stuff. Um, and and I'm kind of seeing that from a lot of other from a lot of conversations that I'm having around as well. So but I, I am still hearing lots of people who are interested in speaking with, you know, strate strategic SEOs, strategic marketers for for that sort of search um, support. So I think that that's that's really interesting. Um, it's, it's a great report. So worth diving into. Yeah. Um he also kind of on the side mentions the economy and the economy does stink. So that could be another reason why jobs are down, but yeah, AI could help with that. But I don't know. I think it's probably more the economy versus AI because I think it's too early for people to really fire people using AI. I think it's more, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm a business owner, Greg, what do you think? I mean, we're doing good, but we do good work. Um, I didn't hear anything about the economy being down by all those advertisers at GML. That's what. That's all I know. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then um, on the Google Search Console side, this is weird surge. Nobody's really talking about it, but uh, Cod Cotter uh, Bottom 
but notify me on threads at his at is k o n r b 14 if you want to follow him that he noticed that the product snippets if you search you go to the google search console performance reports and filter by the search appearance product snippets you'll see a huge spike in the past couple of days which is it's true i went to like dozens of profiles i have access to and they all have huge spikes of product snippets even the sites that don't have product snippets and he's like oh this must be ai overviews that are showing up in replace of product snippets which i don't think is the case but he's like oh i looked at SEMrush data and it seems to be the case i, I asked glenn on the side glenn gave he's like i don't think so either it's, it seems like a bug i assume john Mueller will, will catch us up on that but if you do see a spike there you're definitely not alone there's lots of people that are doing crazy spikes in impressions and, impre and clicks with product snippets in the search console search impression report and the last thing is that I'm seeing a lot of uh, signals of a ranking update again, an unconfirmed Google search ranking update that may have kicked off on May 21st, May 22nd. Um, the tools are all almost all spiking. Uh, Greg, you're in for a real treat when, when it comes to charts today this morning. Um, and there's a lot of chatter that's spiking. So if you are noticing some significant changes in the past day or 24 hours or so, you are definitely not alone there too. I don't think it's all product snippets. I think it's something else going on. So keep that in mind. I'm concerned for the safety of advanced web rankings. It is completely off the charts. You can't even see the top of it. it, it yeah, it is. It's a, it's a 10.0. 10 I love when they go off the scale there. So yes. anyway, much coming in at 9.2. Hot. Yeah, it's pretty heated. So, um, but it is summertime here. So it depends where you are, I guess, in the <laughs> Any event, um, everyone have a great day. We're back tomorrow for more news. And thank you, Greg and Crystal. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.